In this video, we're gonna be showing the planning process of a one acre warm season food plot. Out here, we're gonna be planting Lab Lab, iron clay peas, and sunflower. And we're gonna be planting that at a rate of 50 pounds per acre of iron clay peas, five pounds per acre of Lab Lab, and 10 pounds per acre of sunflower. Um, what that mix is going to do is the iron clay peas and the lab lab are going to provide some awesome summer forage and protein for our deer and the sunflowers are going to provide some support for those plants to grow up on and uh, actually help them grow taller um, as well as the sunflowers are also going to provide some food for doves and for our turkeys as well so um, hopefully this will turn out good um, we're going to document this whole process and uh, show what we've done and, and show you the end result. So uh, if it goes well, hopefully you can use this video as a tutorial. If it goes bad, um, we can use this video to, to learn something for next year. So um, hope this helps you guys. All right, so to get this seed bed ready for planting, first thing we did was get a soil test from our local extension office and we amended the soil with the proper amount of lime and fertilizer based on the soil test. Then about two weeks before we started plowing, we uh, sprayed this field with Roundup at four quarts per acre and then gave it about two weeks for it to turn good and brown. Then as you see here, we first went through it with a chisel plow to break up the hard pan and to dethatch some of the uh, dead plant material from the field. Then we went over it with a couple couple passes on the disc harrow. Uh, got it nice and uh, smooth and got some good furrows in there to accept the seed. Uh, to plant this, you really want to use a grain drill or a, a row planter if you have access to one, but a broadcast spreader will work just fine. And uh, that's what we actually used to plant this one since we didn't have access to a grain drill or a planter. Uh, before you plant, you want to make sure you inoculate your seed uh, with the proper inoculant for the uh, Lab Lab and the iron clay peas. As you can see here, after the inoculant dried, we spread the seed with our broadcast spreader. Uh, when we finished broadcast spreading, we went over this field with a cultipacker to uh, try to fill in the furrows and get good seed to soil contact. Uh, I actually really was not impressed with how the cultipacker filled in and um, buried these large seeds. We still had a lot of seed exposed when we got done. So it's not pictured in the video, but I actually went back over this field with a very light disking uh, to get about one inch of, uh, of dirt on top of those seeds. So I think the light disking is, is definitely the way to go to um, cover up these these larger seeds Okay, so we're here on the upper end of our warm season food plot, and I wanted to talk a little bit about some management considerations for this, uh, this mixture that we've got here. So, um, again, what we've got planted here is uh, 50 pounds of iron clay peas, 5 pounds of Lab Lab, and 10 pounds of Peridovic sunflower. Uh, the reason we went a little bit heavy on the sunflower is we also want to use this as a dove field. Uh, so we wanted to include a little bit more sunflower in the mixture. If you were planning strictly for whitetail, I'd probably cut that back, uh, the sunflower, to about 5 pounds per acre and increase your Lab Lab by 5 pounds. So you'd have 50 pounds of iron clay peas, 10 pounds of Lab Lab, and 5 pounds of Peridovic sunflower. Uh, the sunflower, again, is creating structure for our vining legumes to climb. Uh, one thing that you can also replace the sunflowers with is grain sorghum. Um, a couple things you want to consider on which to use. Uh, one of the big ones is uh, weed control. Uh, if you've got a, a big problem with broadleaf weeds in your food plot, 
Uh, I'd probably go with the grain sorghum. Uh, obviously the sunflower is a broadleaf plant, so uh, if you were to come in with a, a broadleaf selective herbicide, you, you would kill your, your sunflowers. So there's a couple uh, broadleaf specific uh, herbicides out there that won't harm your broadleaf legumes. Uh, so if you had a problem with them, you'd want to include the, the grain sorghum so you could apply that post-emergence. Um, example of one of those uh, would be a bosagran. Um, if you have a, a big problem with, with grasses in your uh, food plots, uh, you might want to consider using the sunflower. That way you could come in with a grass selective herbicide uh, such as clethodum and it wouldn't harm your, uh, your food plot planting. Uh, if you want to use a pre-emergent, uh, one thing you could use on either mixture with the sunflower or the grain sorghum would be dual magnum. Uh, and, it, and it would be a good pre-emergent to use to control uh, both grass and uh, broadleaf weeds. So uh, we did not include a pre-emergent on this uh, because one thing you need to take into consideration is how long that herbicide stays soil residual. Uh, we wanted to come back this fall uh, after um, we've had a few weeks to, to hunt this mixture. We're in Georgia. Our bow season opens mid-September, uh, so we can still hunt this mixture early bow season for a couple weeks before uh, we need to come back and, and plant our uh, cool season mix. But we wanted to do a, a, a clover and wheat mixture this fall, and our pre-emergent would, would not have had enough time to wear off, and it would not allow us to, to plant our fall mixture, so we did not include it in, in here. So um, anytime you're using a herbicide, always make sure to follow the, the instructions on the label to a T. Um, that way you don't, don't mess up your plots or get yourself in trouble. So uh, as you can see, the, this plot's doing really well. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy with, with what we've got here. Uh, we do have a, a little bit of weeds coming up again because we didn't use any weed control in this plot, but um, it does not seem to be out competing the forages. The forages are, are well above the weeds and hopefully they should outshade them. Uh, as you can see behind me, one thing you always need to include in your food plot is a exclusion cage. Uh, that really gives you a good idea of how your plot is, is growing. Um, what's inside that cage is what you should consider as your food plot. Uh, for example, if you, you planted, you think you did everything right, and you come back a few months later and, and your plot is, is just bare, uh, if you didn't have that exclusion cage, you wouldn't know why it was bare. You wouldn't know if it was environmental factors, if you planted it wrong, if it was over-browsed, you'd have no idea. Uh, that exclusion cage at least helps you eliminate the, the problem of it being over-browsed. Uh, if your forages in your exclusion cage are doing great and everything else is barren, uh, that gives you a pretty good idea of what your problem is and, and that you either need to uh, lower your deer herd density or you need to increase available uh, food sources on that property through either uh, timber stand improvement or increasing the amount of food plots that you got. But anyway, that's a, that's a topic for another video, but um, just wanted to, uh, to show you our, our six week progress here and um, hopefully this video will help you guys. Uh, if you ever need any help buying or selling hunting property, uh, call me. Um, those of us at Realtree United Country Talking Rock Realty would be happy to help you. Uh, it's always good when you're buying hunting property to, to hire somebody like myself that understands land management and actually puts it into practice. And uh, I would be more than happy to uh, not only help you get under contract on that perfect property, but help uh, advise you on how to implement some management strategies to really make it uh, that, that great place to hunt that you've always wanted. So uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned to my channel for more videos.